So after the Missouri Compromise of 1820, westward expansion continues throughout the United States and into territory not owned by the United States government. And the most popular destination, for reasons that we will describe later, is the area known as Texas. So this is a picture of the territory that Mexico controlled from um, the middle of the 19th century, from their independence um, and their um, subsequent um, revolution in 1820 that um, will um, allow them to gain access and control to previously owned Spanish lands in places like Texas, New Mexico, California, that are now a part of the United States, but were a part of Mexico during that time. So Texas, during this time period, is actually going to be this area in the bottom half of what we would consider to be Texas today. So before Texas becomes its own country and, and later becomes its own state, it was a part of Mexico. Mexico wanted people to live in the area that um, we just pointed out um, of Texas. So they allowed American citizens to move there. Um, they wanted people to move there so that um, they could pay taxes to the Mexican government um, and more people could live there so that they could develop it and become more valuable. And so the Mexican state of Texas was led by a guy named Stephen F. Austin. And Americans that lived in Texas were required to follow Mexican laws, which is understandable. Um, they live in a part of the, of the Mexican country at the time. They needed to follow Mexican laws. And over the course of that immigration period, so uh, middle of the, of the 19th century, um, 1820 onwards, about 25,000 Americans are going to move to Texas. The Mexican requirements for Americans moving to Texas, they had to do three things. The first, they had to become citizens of Mexico. They had to give up their American citizenship, or they could become dual citizens. They had to become members of the Catholic Church, a holdover of, of the um, many of the missions in Texas. Um, the Catholic Church has a huge influence on Central and South America, um, but it also has a huge influence in the state of Texas. Um, throughout the state, there are many places where Catholic missionaries set up uh, missions, the, the most famous being the Alamo. Um, the, the Texans are, um, and, and many of the, of the people that live in Mexico, are devout Catholics. So they had to become members of the Catholic Church. And the biggest requirement that's going to lead to the most tension is that Americans moving to Texas could not own slaves. It was outlawed in Mexico at the time. Um, and so Americans that moved to Texas needed to, needed to follow all three of these um, rules. And the third one is going to cause the most tension because of Texas's geography. Many people who live in the South are going to move to Texas and want to own slaves. Um, because of Texas's geography and its location to those southern states. But this was a requirement because the, the, the government of Mexico had already outlawed slavery. So a couple of things that lead to tension. Like we mentioned, Mexico had already outlawed slavery and Americans wanted to continue to own slaves that lived there. Americans living in Texas spoke English and not Spanish, and so there was some tension that was created there because um, of the uh, cultural and language disconnect. Um, official documents were in Spanish, um, and these Americans that lived in Texas did not speak Spanish. So these two things create tension between the Texans and the um, and the U and the Texas between Texas and the Mexican government. So Mexico's response was to close immigration to Americans. And Americans living in Texas were now trapped in Mexico. They couldn't leave because there wasn't any in or out. Um, the border was closed. So 
Mexican dictator Antonio Lopez de Santa Anna threw Stephen F. Austin in jail. He was the leader of Texas. And they rebelled in 1835. So Texas is going to fight against the Mexican government in 1835. Um, this is going to be the war that will lead to Texas's independence. The most famous battle of the um, Texas in, the war for Texas independence is the Alamo, San Antonio. So San Anon, Santa Ana and 6,000 Mexican troops are going to march to San Antonio. 188 Texas and Tejanos, so Texans would be Americans living in Texas, and Tejanos would be Mexicans that live in Texas, so Mexican citizens, um, are going to defend the city of San Antonio and the mission to so the Catholic Church um, where um, priests and nuns live. Um, in in Texas. So the Mexican army is going to surround the Alamo, which is the mission, um, and a, 187 of the 188 people defending the mission are going to die. Here's what the Alamo looks like today, and here's a graphic um, painting of the, of the fighting that took place at the Alamo. So here it is today. And here's what it looks like as an artist drew it in 18, um, in the 1830s, a, a, an artistic rendition of the Alamo. So after the fighting of the Alamo, and the Texans are going to lose that battle. The rest of the Texas army, which is going to be led by Sam Houston, is going to retreat east to the San Jacinto River. Um, Santa Ana is going to expect the army to attack at dawn, but instead um, attacked in the afternoon. As was the um, case at the time, most of the fighting and wars took place in the morning, right, as people were um, waking up, because um, we want to remember that this is in the south. Um, there was no air conditioning. Um, it's the coolest part of the day, and many of these people were fighting with um, full army regalia and attire. It's going to be difficult to fight in the middle of the afternoon, and so they are going to do most of the fighting in um, in the morning time. And so, what Sam Houston is going to do to kind of catch them off guard is going to attack after lunchtime, and they're going to catch the Mexicans off guard because. Um, they were, would have been expecting Sam Houston to fight and, and to um, come at them the next day. But instead, he's going to come in the afternoon, catching them off guard, capture Santa Ana. And in exchange for his release, uh, Mexico is going to re uh, remove all of their troops from Texas. Um, again, it's that little space of land that is not the entire state of Texas that we know today. Um, it's still a, a very vast amount of land between the Red River and the Gulf of Mexico, but the east-west does not go as far as it does um, as it does today. But the Mexican army will leave Texas. And so then the, the decision is, well, what does the U.S. want to do with Texas because there are so many Americans that live there? So do they want to bring Texas in or not? Texans will tell you um, now that they're very proud of being their own country before they um, ever become um, their own state. Um, but Texas and the government of Texas wanted to join the United States. However, Texas um, was denied that um, acceptance by the United States and became their own independent nation for 10 years. Um, so from 1837 to, to 1847, Texas is going to become an independent nation. This is the land of the Texas Republic that they negotiate with the Mexican government. So as you can see, it has its traditional Rio Grande border um, down here. It has its Red River border. Um, it has its demarcation because this is, remember, this is Indian territory now. And so this was a part of Mexico, um, this, this part in red, and the bottom half is now going to be, be a part of the Republic of Texas. This is the flag of the Republic of Texas, one of six flags that fly over Texas. And as a result of the, um, 
the United States' actions with Texas, they're going to fight um, against Mexico in the Mexican-American War. So in the election of 1844, um, James K. Polk is going to run against Henry Clay. And we say that this is the same Henry Clay because Henry Clay is going to be the person that negotiates with Andrew Jackson during the corrupt bargain and John Quincy Adams. Clay, being the Speaker of the House, uses his influence to get Adams elected that makes Jackson super mad. He's going to run for president in 1844 against James K. Polk. Polk is going to run on a platform to annex Texas, which means to bring Texas into the United States. Clay is not going to agree with that decision, and this is going to become the big issue of the election. Polk is going to win the election of 1844, and when he becomes president in 1845, he's going to annex Texas. Mexico views the annexation as an act of war and is going to declare war on the United States in 1846. The annexation process takes a long time, um, and the, the part that they're going to fight over is, is the, the section that is um, a part of the, the, um, the Republic of Texas that was a part of Mexico, that wasn't a part of the state of Texas when it was a part of Mexico. So this area right here is a part of the, the, the area that's, that's east of the Nueces River is going to be the, the state of Texas that Mexico is okay leaving um, and becoming a part of the United States. It's the Rio Grande and um, up to the Colorado River that um, Mexico is going to fight against the United States for. It is a part of the Republic of Texas. However, um, Mexico is going to view it as part of their own and that they are not allowed to, they being the United States, is not allowed to um, take the land over um, without conflict. So there are going to be a number of, um, of battles that happen both on land and on, um, and on the sea. And so many of the, um, of the fighting that's going to happen um, is going to take place on the on the Gulf of Mexico border. So um, the city of Monterrey um, and Matamoros and Palo Alto and Corpus Christi. Um, basically, the the plan for Polk is to provoke the Mexicans um, into into armed conflict. And what's going to happen is that all of this fighting is going to happen um, on the the way to um, a very big battle that happens in 1847 in Veracruz down here. Once the Americans control and occupy Veracruz, then they can go to Cerro Gordo, and then they can go to Mex Mexico City. So if we go to the insert, we can see that there's a number of, of battles that take place in, in 1847 in and around Mexico City, including Guadalupe Hidalgo, which is going to be the name of the treaty at the end of the war. So all of these things take place in 1847 and 1846. Um, Taylor will, will play an important role in setting off the, the fighting when he invades the disputed area, area um, going west of the Nueces River. Um, but all of these things, including um, the occupying of Mexico City, is going to lead to the end of the Mexican-American War. So again, 1846 to 1848, 1846 to 1848, Zachary Taylor is going to march troops to the southern border of Texas. Winfield Scott is going to sail troops to Veracruz, and they're going to march to Mexico City, Scott's men, from Veracruz and take over the city. Mexico will then surrender, and the U.S. will take land that includes Texas, Oklahoma, Colorado, New Mexico, and Utah. So if we go back to the map, Scott starts in New Orleans, is going to bounce on the Gulf of Mexico border cities and fight in a few different places there. Taylor is going to come south and go east um, when he is fighting in, in his um, battle um, there. It's going to get things started. They're all going to come to a head in the city of Monterey. Um, but in the treaty that they sign, they're going to control this disputed area land that includes Texas, Oklahoma, Colorado, New Mexico, and um, Utah. So they're going to sign the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo after Scott takes the capital of Mexico City. Um, the governments of the U.S. and the Mexico are going to of, of the U.S. and of Mexico are going to sign the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo in 1848. 
which will give the United States land from sea to shining sea. So it's going to include a lot of land that Mexico will give to the United States. It will connect this this idea of manifest destiny um, that essentially God has predestined us to control us being the United States to control land from the Atlantic Ocean to the Pacific Ocean, and that we should then control all of this territory. This is the um, this is the annexation and Mexican cession. So here is the um, here is the land that Texas will become a part of when the U.S. declares um, them a part of the United States in 1845. This is the land that Mexico will give to the United States in 1848. So this big swath of land that includes California, Nevada, Utah, Arizona, New Mexico, Colorado, and parts of Oklahoma and Kansas are all going to become a part of the United States um, territory and control in the uh, signing of the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo in 1848.